In this video we're going to talk about the graphical interface changes in CAM350 and DFM Stream. First thing you'll notice is a major architectural change in that we are using the ribbon based architecture for CAM350 and DFM Stream now. Across the top of our screens here we do have several ribbons. These are context sensitive ribbons. The commands underneath these are arranged by their context. So under an analyze menu for instance I have comparison options, I have uh, DRC, DAFF type options. Under drill and mill I have some standard commands that go along with drill and mill creation and modification. Under the view menu I have viewing commands. Along with this we provide tooltips now. When you put your mouse over a particular command you'll get a tooltip that shows what that command is and then if there's any additional information needed to run that command we'll go ahead and provide that as well. We've combined all the options in the tool into a centralized location so everything from your measurement units to what type of snapping you want to do to the colors you're going to use can be accessed from this one centralized location. The layer display mode, similar to the navigation pane in the older versions, with some additional changes or enhancements, uh, the ability to go and look at data not only in a cam mode here, but also in more of a design mode where you can color code each particular element in the design on a particular layer. There's also tooltips in the editor itself. So if I put my mouse over a particular element in my design, I get information about that element. There's also static information that I can turn on or off. Here we have a decode it's telling us that this is decode 15. It's also in this case giving us a net name and in here it's giving us a pin number. As I said this information can be turned on or off from the view menu as well as from the world view menu. In addition in the world view menu there's a layer transparency mode that can be turned on or off and the level of transparency can be controlled from your options menu. There's a new selection filter for when you're doing editing and you can narrow down your selection to the exact items or group of items that you want to edit. As with most of these panes in this new interface, this can be auto hidden if I want to and then just recalled when I need it. If you don't like a particular pane, you can just simply turn it off. If you auto hide a particular pane and you do need to bring it back, you can bring it back for just the operation you're working on or you can repin it so that it's available from that point on. These can also be moved off to additional monitors as well. We've taken all of the tables in CAM350 and DFM stream and tried to combine them into a centralized location. And that's what you're seeing down here at the bottom of the screen. So everything from system messages to the decodes used to uh, parts to drill and mill tools to even errors when we run analysis will all show up now in this pane at the bottom of your screen which of course can be hidden as well. A new addition to CAM350 and DFM Stream is 3D. There is a 3D mode that I can move into. And in this 3D mode we will regenerate the colors to look like an actual PCB. I can turn parts on or off if they're present and of course I can rotate and manipulate the design in the 3D mode. There will be a video specifically on the 3D mode later on. But you can
can see that the tooltips work here as well. And we've just given you a new way of viewing the PCB in our tool. We call this the PCB model mode, where we actually look at the design as if it were an actual PCB. In addition to all this, we've given you a new mouse mode. There is the CAD mode where you can just zoom in and out with your scroll button and you can hold that button down to pan throughout the design. All of these are part of the new graphical interface in CAM 350 and DFM Stream.